Welcome to my channel. <clears throat> if you haven't met him before, I want to introduce you to Black Harvard Professor Roland Fryer. The only reason I mention his skin color is because it's important to the story. But before we get into that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for all the traffic. I'm over 2,000 subscribers. I, I'm. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even explain it to you. It blows my mind. If I go much higher than that, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll be speechless, I guess, and that's something for me. <laughs> you know, I can talk. But I, I just have to express my thankfulness every time I do one of these videos because. It's the truth. I am so thankful for all the traffic, for all the interaction, for all the wonderful people that have come to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're not familiar with Professor Roland Fryer, he's a Harvard economist, <clears throat> and he's a young man, and he has received a numerous awards for his work. But what he's going to be talking about in this video on, on X is a research project that he did looking at bias in police interactions with minorities. And what he found was that there was some clear bias in police interactions with Hispanics and with blacks in terms of non-lethal force. But when it came to lethal force, he found no bias at all. And this is a very robust study. He'll talk about it, so I don't need to say any more. I'm just going to play this short clip for you, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. I collected a lot of data. We collected millions of observations on uh, everyday use of force that wasn't lethal. We collected thousands of observations on lethal force. And, and it was in this moment, 2016, that I realized people lose their minds when they don't like the result. So what my paper showed, you'll see tomorrow, uh, like some of you, uh, was that, yes, we saw some bias in the low-level uses of force, every day pushing up against cars and things like that. People tend to like that result. But we didn't find any um, uh, racial bias in police shootings. Now. That was really surprising to me because I expected to see it. The little known fact is I had eight full-time RAs that it took to do this over nearly a year. When I found this surprising result, I hired eight fresh ones and redid it to make sure. They came up with the same exact answer and I thought it was robust and then I went to go give it and my God, all hell broke loose. It was a 104 page dense academic economics paper with a 150 page appendix, okay? It was posted for four minutes when I got my first email, this is full of shit. Doesn't make any sense. And I wrote back, how'd you read it that fast? That's amazing. You are a genius. And I had colleagues take me into to the side and say, don't publish this. You'll ruin your career. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? I said, what's wrong with it? Do you believe the first part? Yes. Do you believe the second part? Well, it's the issue is they just don't fit together. We like the first one, but you should publish the, no the second one another time. I said, let me ask this. If the second part about the police shootings, this is a literal conversation, I said to them, if the second part uh, showed bias, do you think I would, should publish it then? And they said, yeah, then it would make sense. And I said, I guarantee you I'll publish it. We'll see what happens. So it was, it was you know, I, I lived under, under um, police protection for about 30 or 40 days. I had a seven-day-old daughter at the time. 
I remember going and shopping for it because, you know, when you have a newborn, you think you have enough diapers, you don't. So I, I was going to the grocery store to get diapers with the armed guard. It was crazy. It was really, truly crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> what I'm showing you now is a podcast where he discusses his paper in length. And uh, I'll put the link in the description along with the other one. <clears throat> so that you can read it or you can listen to the podcast if you're interested. But the point of me bringing this up is there's something seriously wrong with an educational system where you can do research that is very robust, that has millions and millions of data points and thousands and thousands of data points on police shootings. And when you find results that don't fit with the political narrative that people want to hear, you are told by academics you shouldn't publish this. Does that make any sense to anyone? <clears throat> How can an academic make a statement like that? Well, the only thing I can think of is they're not really academics. They're partisans wearing robes, caps and gowns. They're not doing research. They're trying to find confirmation for their bias. That's the only explanation I can come up with. If you've got another one, put it in the comments. But to me, this is insane. Here is a young black man who is highly accomplished, by the way. If you read in the description of the episode what he's accomplished and where he came from, a, a, a drug-addicted family. He was working at McDonald's, not corporate. <laughs> you know, serving fries and burgers, okay? <clears throat> and then he went to college, and now he's considered one of the most brilliant economic minds in the world. And yet, he does a paper that doesn't fit with the racial narrative that the left wants, and bam, he has to get police protection. Police protection, an academic. I mean, the insanity of it. it it's just, the world we live in is, has gone mad. It's just gone mad. I do these things. I know I do a lot of music reactions, but I do these things because I want you to know what's going on in the world and I want you to understand what the problems are because if we don't understand the problems we can't overcome them and we have a gigantic problem in education i mean a massive problem it, it is i worked in education for 20 years i know it from the inside and i can tell you it's it's a problem it's a real problem no i was not a professor i don't even have a college degree Okay. I quit college and went in the Navy. But I'm not stupid. And I can see what's going on. And so can you. And we have to do something about it. Something has to be done. This podcast was recorded at the University of Austin, Texas, which is a brand new university that's been established because the people that are teaching there said they can't be they can't be honest academic academicians at standard or normal universities the universities are so infected so completely corrupted that it's impossible to be an honest researcher in them Lots and lots of work to do to fix our world, I'll tell you that. But there are people that are working on it, and that's something to be thankful for. 
For you, my followers, those of you who watch my videos and who subscribe to my channel, you know how I feel about you. I pray for you daily. And I pray that you will come to know God as I do. And that you will be comforted by his arms. And that you'll never be anxious. That you'll always be wealthy and abundant and healthy. I just pray for you. This is the Vietnam era vet out.